and the BEF is in the process of uh, putting together a document which is essentially an entrepreneur's charter which outlines everything that we as an organization see um, as developments that would help entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship in Barbados, and that is to be presented to the government. We had our launch in April of 2013 and we put our first customers live in June and you know we now have over 250 people employed in Barbados and probably uh, you know 80% of the country covered with our network and so uh, I was chatting to someone at the weekend and he was telling me you know what, how, how does that help I guess but uh, you know what businesses and small entrepreneurs now pay for broadband and services compared to what they used to pay mm -hmm. has d dipped significantly and, and in fact I was chatting to a gentleman from Sweden who recently got our service installed in his house and he said it's transformed what he can do he now can work from home and he interacts in, with Europe he's using Skype etc so our, our role I guess is not not so much goes back to don't predict the future enable it our role is really as an enabler uh, building technology um, to help young people to start businesses and I guess I always give the example that you know a, a kid now in, in uh, St. James can has the, le the playing field is level and probably even quicker we've 300 makes at home with the guy who's sitting in New York Los Angeles or Singapore so he now has access to the same technology so I guess we see ourselves as facilitators in terms of providing the technology and hopefully providing the example to what entrepreneurship can do and uh, you know that's something that I guess we bring to the table have a build-up period where our ambassadors, our volunteers, go into the schools to coach all the kids. So the actual competition itself will kick off in mid-November. I believe it's in your press pack, there's, a, there's an actual schedule of the whole thing, but just briefly, mid-November the actual thing will kick off. Technically it ends mid-December, but in that period, just before, the same weekend that the, the schools break up, we're having, we're going to have um, what we're calling uh, a BF Columbus $20 challenge trade fair where all the participants will be invited to go along and promote and sell their products or their services. So it doesn't have to be just a product. If you've got a service, and very often our competitors uh, do have service, they can do it as an actual trade fair. Again, location to be confirmed, but it'll be somewhere in public and we make it as realistic as possible. Um, they will then hand in their entries as soon as they go back to school in January. So what we're doing really, it's like four to six weeks, of, six weeks of actually operating the business, but we're giving the benefits of while they're on vacation anyway for Christmas, they can tidy up their entries, their applications, so, so by the time they come back to school in first week in January, they then hand them in. We take them during the month of January, we do the judging process, which starts with kind of a, a committee doing an elimination to, to try and find the finalists. And then we set up an actual Saturday morning where we have a panel of about 10 people um, and all the people in the, who, who are finalists are invited to come along and present themselves. And I say that purposely, but more or less it's a chance for us to meet them and let them speak on their own behalf rather than them having to present the, the, the project. Because we've seen that. We want to find the people behind it. We only went to four forms. In my former life, I taught for 14 years here in Barbados. And I was very conscious that Form 5, with all that involves with CXEs, is, you know, is possibly a no-no. Third form, <coughs> sometimes they, they can be, they're, they're the developing years, Form 3, sometimes not so easy to, to deal with. Form 4 is just about right. The, the mature enough to understand, but they don't have the pressures of the actual CXE year. So that's why it began. But then those same four formers said at the end of it, but we want to do it again next year. So then we approached the schools, what do you think? They said if they want to do it, no problem. So we went to fourth and fifth. So it's fourth and fifth again this year. Now that we're hearing about third form, would we possibly go there? Absolutely. There's, there's, no, there's no barriers, there's nothing stopping us, provided we have the resources. And you know, very often people think financial resources is the biggest problem, and it's not always. It's human resources. We re this is a big thing. Uh, to, to put this on every year is not a five-minute piece of volunteer work. There's a lot goes on behind the scenes to do it properly, involving an awful lot of people. So for us to expand more would clearly depend on continued generosity of sponsors. It's raised in excess of $1,000 on. And part of the prize is you can keep your profit. So 
So apart from the satisfaction, a student could end up at the end of the four to six week period with an extra thousand dollars in their bank account that they never had before. Which is why we encourage the charity aspect of it. Some teams set out from day one to be charitable. We've had teams who've raised almost two thousand dollars and donated them directly to, to cancer, every penny, including the uh, cancer research was one, autism, like the, the quick video clips that Nigel showed you, <coughs> that, that, you know, that's not even the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's even behind the stories, there's a story. So the young girls, towards the end, a group of four or five of them, uh, they got involved with um, children affected by autism. And above and beyond the $20 challenge, they carried on helping at that school, not just raising funds to help them buy equipment, but actually going there themselves in their spare time to work with the children. That's the kind of attitude that we need. Um, sorry, it's a long-winded question to a, <laughs> a long-winded answer to a short question, but <coughs> we, we, that, that's why we need anybody who's been exposed to the $20 challenge, either as an ambassador helping one of our volunteers, as a, either as a part of our team who stays the whole thing, either as a sponsor, the teachers involved, but the participants themselves, by the end of it, they're like, wow, how cool was that? What an experience that was. So a great role that you, the media, could play is kind of getting that message out there that it's a very wholesome, very rewarding, very positive event. So the more people who can get involved, either as participants or helpers, uh, the better for everybody. And it becomes a self-perpetuating thing. It's not about the $20 challenge. Some of my favorite entries never even got to judging level. Small, quick example. I was going through one, I think it was the very first year, and I'm going through the entries and I found this scrap of paper. And I literally kind of picked it up to throw away. And then I realized it had a bit of writing on. When I read it, it was very, illegible, like very bad handwriting, and the paper wasn't just a long piece of paper, really scruffy. But when I read it, it was a boy, and he'd written, Sir, uh, I'm sorry I never got to finish, but I've enjoyed it so much, I know I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Now, that meant more to me than being able to give somebody a trophy and saying, well done, you're the champion at this, this or that category because you've sown the seed, you know, and, and whoever that boy was, I bet he does go on to become an entrepreneur. Um, the guy with the juices, Ngozi Seal, his name is, he won last year because he recognized that he was a natural entrepreneur and he did really well last year. So when we saw he'd applied again, we were thrilled, absolutely thrilled because he'd recognized that he'd won, but that was only part of the journey, it wasn't the destination. So he came back and did it again, when he did it 10 times better. You probably didn't notice it, but his nice smart t-shirt he had on, had his own logo on. <laughs> so he walks into a room of judges, not dissimilar to this, where there's about 10 of us sat around the table, Saturday morning, you can imagine that could be potentially daunting for people, age 14, 15, and Gozi walks in, smartly dressed, with his logo, on his shirt, carrying a cooler full of his products. Before he'd said a word, he put the cooler down on the table, he said good morning, put the cooler down on the table, took out samples of the drink, lined them up alongside, pulled this wad of business cards out of his pocket, <laughs> gave every judge a business card, opened the juice and said, you know, try them, please try them. So we start to try them, he then starts his pitch. Before he could start to speak to us, the judges were arguing about who was buying the ginger wine. 